Welcome back, everybody, and welcome to the Dr. Pepper All-Star Hearthstone Tournament. Uh, I'm Dard, and joining me casting today is Kung In. So, Hello, boys. To uh, summarize everything that's happened, uh, first of all, we are in a qualifier tournament. This is an open tournament to everyone. So for those of you who are watching, we highly, highly, highly recommend that you uh, go to hs.drpepper-cup.de in order to register for future cups because we have two left following today in order to qualify for the playoffs which is a 16 person final tournament uh in the end of july so we are going into round five of this tournament in order to qualify for i think it is going to be the top 16 of today which will then lead to the top four to qualify for the playoffs yes if I got that correctly. Yeah, the, the top four players today will qualify to the main tournament, or the playoff to the main tournament, maybe. No, I think the f top four players qualifies to the real Dr. Pepper tournament that is in July. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think that's correct. So we're actually about to go into the match of Ruxar versus Idiotech 19 1991. I don't think we necessarily needed his battle tag, but that's okay. Or I'm not sure if that's his battle tag or not. But, um, <laughs> so it turns out that they have already played their first match where Idiotech actually won with Freeze Mage against Ruxar's Hunter. That's very typical, a guy named Ruxar playing Rexar. Yes, yeah, so no more Freeze Mage. The Freeze Mage is out from Idiotech then. Mm -hmm. uh, what ranks do these guys have? Idiotech is a legend player. And uh, what about Rexar? I haven't seen him on the list there. Ruxar is like he is two not legend. Ah, uh, rank two non legend. Okay. So let let's see if our predictions are correct. <clears throat> the higher legend player each time will win. Well, he did win the first game, so it's looking like it so far. <laughs> so far, our original predictions have been right that actually the higher legend players have won every single match, and we're going to yeah. see if that actually follows through for the entire tournament. We still have a few matches left, so we got a lot of time to figure out if it's true or not. So, since uh, since his first deck was Freeze Mage, what, what do you think uh, is a strong uh, deck to combine with the Freeze Mage? Again, this this is the words from the Rats, one of probably the original innovators of the Patron deck. Is anyone who doesn't bring Grim Patron Warrior to a tournament is just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was uh, I was watching uh, another tournament recently, and uh, everyone was banning Warrior from each other as the first ban. Mm -hmm. So it seems that Hearthstone has turned out to be that way lately. Again, but it's kind of always been like that, yeah. though. Like Just... I don't know, from like in every meta game that existed in Hearthstone, there has always been like one deck that's slightly stronger than all the other ones. Don't you think so? It's very often it's been like that, at least. Like the one deck you kind of always want to ban. I think the problem is when that one deck has zero counters. And I think that's the issue yeah. people with Patron Warrior are running into. Most people are actually bringing Handlock to hopefully counter. But once again, mm -hmm. it's these Patron Warriors are getting more and more experience actually beating the deck, which is becoming a major, major problem. Um, this Hybrid Hunter is probably stands one of the best chances of beating it. And again, we are seeing it, I think. Ruxar is the hunter, I think, correct? Yeah. Yes, Ruxar is the hunter. And Idiotech is playing Handlock. So Hunter should be the favorite here. Mm -hmm. But we'll see, we'll see. Uh, Idiotech does have the Molt Giant and a Taunt already, Taunter, which is yeah. big, big. Um, factor in this matchup. You need mm -hmm. the both giants to get taunted up and then you're gonna need those heal bots to get you back out of the uh possible kill command quick shot type range. Oh he went for it. I, I think it's really scary to coin out the coin out the knife juggler here since they might have the dark bomb. I would prefer the scientist honestly. Or even the creeper because you can use the you can you know trade the creeper and then play the knife juggler and trade the creeper and get a bunch of bounces from the juggler. Mm -hmm. So I don't yeah. really like that play personally. Especially if you don't know if it's Zoo or Handlock. I, yeah. I think that the Mad Scientist is probably a safer play. The mm -hmm. 
juggler could have paid off, but the ways they can get punished really makes you just fall behind in this matchup. But the thing is, at most he would just get one juggle the next turn, so even if, you know, it lives, the juggler itself wouldn't do that much, would it? So I'm calling you right now, Ruxar is going to play Huffer. Yes, <laughs> Animal <laughs> Companion is definitely the right play here. Oh, Leoc, he, he played the wrong card. <laughs> never lucky, never lucky. Still not a bad one though, because it does get a little bit of extra damage no. in. So the Handlock has, he has a pretty good hand, I'd say. Uh, the Hunter doesn't really have a good answer to the Belcher coming out next turn either. But he doesn't have a great turn four play, which is an issue right no. now. You know what, I don't think you really want to play the farce here just to get a free trade into the Mad Scientist. But does he have a choice at this point? He can't really do anything else. He should, like, the taunters are very important at this point. Okay. I think you just heal self here. I mean, the hunter might always go face as well. <laughs> right? Face forever. <clears throat> I think so. So let's think this through. If he plays Earth Ring Farseer, the mad scientist can trade into it. What can you expect from a hunter on turn four? Oh, uh, probably, oh. That is perfect. <laughs> that was that was definitely the right place since he drew an ancient watcher. <laughs> wow. It's, he knew that was coming. It's the only explanation. Mm -hmm. I think what he was thinking is he could either draw an ancient watcher or an owl, which gives him four out there, or even a dark bomb, which would have done something. So it wasn't, I think, a terrible play there. No. What do you think about? I mean, when you don't really want to kill that, and and you at the same time you have to be afraid of taunts and uh, you know shadow flame. Um, what what would you think about attacking it with the mad scientist using glaive zuka and just killing it? To kill it, yeah, I think that's the right play. But he has to do this in the correct order. But then you want to attack first with the scientist, yeah, because now the scientist might be buffed. Okay, he looked out. If it's the play he's going for, he might just go straight out face as well. Yeah, it looks like it looks it. like exactly what he's doing. I I actually like trading that unit because uh, if you trade it, what can the what can the warlock really do at turn five? Not much. And I think the low step's gonna be really big because it'll seal off any chance of an AOE play here. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, even if he plays Belcher right now and starts taking damage, he will have that Ancient Watcher and the Molten Giant to double ton up. Yep. Um, is there any, like, I guess you only have two plays here, Belcher or Sun Fury Farseer, but Sun Fury Farseer since, I mean, you usually want to Farseer like as late as possible or maybe get some value out of it, so. I would have to agree. I think Belcher is... I wouldn't say... Slam more Belcher and hope they don't have but... silence. Exactly. So you might, you might not be able to use Argus either. I mean, you never know. I mean, it does cost two more mana than the Sun Fury, so... It might be the taunter you need. So if, I think that's what he's worried about. An Owl Kill Command would end it if he uses Belcher. Which is why I think... I mean, it's a far stretch with only three cards in hand, but I guess he wants to play it a little bit safe here by playing Sun Fury in the mm, farm. Yeah, he's yeah. playing the double taunter, okay. This is when the Loth is going to come out and really seal the deal. I mean, he may very well actually use the Wolf Rider in order to just push a little bit more damage, but... What do you mm, well, I think you just play Lotub and then you play Scientist, Scientist Weapon into the Taunt and the 3 for into the other one, and then just face, I guess. Face for 2. I don't have to agree with that. The only issue, if it is the Freezing Trap that most of these hybrid hunters are playing, mm -hmm. is just going to pop back the Taunter, which is not something you really want to do. But on the other hand, he has him at 16, he has shit tons of damage on board, so... And he played Lotep, so he can't really use any spells. It's looking really good for him here. Well, he definitely has to go face here, right? 
we can't see what trap it is, but we assume. Do they normally run double freezing, or what traps do they run in this hybrid hunter? Uh, most of them run freezing. I know after a while, after the hybrid hunter became more and more popular, a couple of them threw in some explosive traps to kind of counter the like the mirror deck. Yeah, it, it was a freezing. I saw it there. Yeah. Let's see. So he can only really play the Belcher here. He doesn't have any other options. The... Yeah, I think you're correct on that. So maybe playing the way he did kind of came back to bite him because now he's actually not low enough to play this giant. Mountain giant. Exactly. That's why I would have preferred Belcher the previous turn because then he would have taken some damage and he can play the giant plus the heal and the Sun Fury this turn instead. What would you think about M4 <clears throat> Fan? No, that would act. Never mind, because he no, can't kill he dies then, here. Pretty much. Especially because he's going to get popped back by the Sun Fury. 9 11, 5. So he does have to Belcher after this pops back. I mean, yeah. What does he do the next turn? Like, he has to have. Uh, well, he does have the Molten next turn. Sora's hand and he's dead. Oh, okay, he just he, he decides to take the route that'll actually keep him alive for another turn. Yeah. So here's kind of the bad thing about Belcher right now, is that it's gonna get completely wiped off the board. Yeah. And he still doesn't lose point. a single minion. Exactly. So that'll actually end up forcing him to use Hellfire, which is obviously just not a good play in this current position. Well, I think you definitely just dropped the high main. Do you like high main over Shredder? Yeah. Okay. Now, would you attack in this position? Yeah, that's the question. So he has seven mana next turn. It would be a three molten. I would not attack, I think. It's a really tough decision, though. Like, I mean, I, I would have to think more about it. I'm, I'm not really sure at this point. Because uh, the Molten Giant would cost four, right? But let's say Hellfires and place it. Uh, you really have to go through all the plays before you decide that. Like, what can the hand look to? So I think he's dead. But Hellfire Molten Giant, I think, is his best play currently. Alpha Molten Giant. It lives eight damage. Uh... What could he tap into, if anything? I don't think even Heobot would save him. Wait, what play did he say? Molten Shadow Flame? That doesn't work. No, no, no. Hellfire into Molten. Oh, Hellfire into Molten. Oh. That would leave him at 13 with only. Eight damage on board, and hopefully this hunter doesn't have the kill. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't have any good options here. I guess that is the only play he has. So Ruxar's Rexar will take game two. Yep, that's oh, that's very lethal. And that just rubs salt in the wound. <laughs> Ten damage plus. Let's see if he'll do it. He'll do it. Nope. He's a good sport. So that's the first 1-1 one, one so far. So we are going into the final game of the match. Now keep in mind everyone, whoever wins this one will actually make it to the grid stage, which is actually a single elimination bracket style portion of this tournament and it will be, if I recall it, should be top 8 players actually make it to the grid. And then you have to win one more from there to make it top four in order to qualify for the playoffs of the Dr. Pepper All-Star Tournament. That is correct. So it's going to be Handlock against something we don't know yet. Mm -hmm. Now, do we know whether the players have to declare their classes beforehand or have to keep them throughout the tournament? Or does Ruxar have the ability to basically choose what deck he plays? 
Um, I, I don't think it's possible for the other player to know what he plays with his other deck since they can swap between the games. So mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's just clueless to what he's going to play against here. Oh, it's Handlock oh. against Handlock, maybe? Are we going to see a it's long a nice... match? Oh, it is. It is. It is. It is. This matchup is usually the, the best Handlock player usually wins this matchup. Wait. Oh. Huh? I'm not sure what the rules are for this. <laughs> Did someone choose the wrong deck? For I think so. Did one of the... Hmm. Not sure what happened there. I think someone okay, just so chose the wrong deck, basically. Currently asking the players what exactly happened, but... Yeah, okay, there Oh. We go. Let's see what kind of mage it is. And oh, it looks like a freeze mage. Shows you that this handlock was originally made to defeat Patient Warrior. Oh yeah, you're right. In it. Mm -hmm. So in this matchup, I I mean Frost Mage is definitely a favorite, but handlocks have proven to do fairly okay against them lately with the new cards. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> They were not happy with the matchup. What is happening right now? I have no clue. Are they flipping a coin and then just saying, I concede, you win? <laughs> uh, we got maybe, maybe, maybe it was Handlock versus Sue they were looking to play. Well, whoever had the big game hunter, that one game is probably upset now, because that's such a major card in the mirror. What, why did they go from Handlock to Handlock to another matchup and then back to Handlock? Handlock, I'm confused there. Okay, so but let's make sure we have this straight. I think it's Ruxar is on the bottom, Idiotech is on the top. Yeah, I'm not sure. Wait. Oh, okay, there we go. My Skype was a little bit bugged. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Well, it looks like they're going to play this game. Yep. I guess they decided that Freeze Mage versus Handlock wasn't fun enough for us to watch. They wanted to do the mirror match. <laughs> I really like watching this matchup. It's it's always interesting. They they always have a lot of different options, and it's very easy to mess it up as well. Exactly. What do you think about the decision to keep Ancient Watcher Sunfury Protector? No, I don't like that at all. Why? Were, well, like, he doesn't know if it's Sue or not, or does he? So does that mean the? I think the bottom would then be Ruxar and the top would be Idiotech. Yes, it should. I mean, if you look at the hands they kept, that should be the case. Because <clears throat> you definitely don't want to keep Watcher Sun Fury against another hand. Look, it doesn't make any kind of sense. Okay, so I think we've got it straight. So Idiotech is on the coin. Ruxar is on the top currently. Yeah. And so the initial tap, I think, gave it away that it's most likely handlock. Mm -hmm. I, I like going with the big Drake here as well, like he's doing here. Mm -hmm. Oh, and big game honors again, such a big card. Oh wow, matchup. But it's always scary when you coin out the Drake here. If your opponent can play a giant, you're always in big trouble. It's it's very scary to coin out coin coin out the Drake against other handlocks when you start with the coin. I think it may be correct just to play the Ancient Watcher here in order to follow it up with the uh, Giant. I, I think playing the Giant first over the Drake is a little bit more important mm -hmm. in hopes that your opponent does not have a uh, big game hunter. Yeah. This turn is always tough when you're playing Handlock. Uh, I, I don't like having coin when I play Handlock since it's really nice to have the Giant turn 4 instead of a Drake. Mm -hmm. So he is going to decide to coin out the Drake, which yeah. unfortunately it's going to actually <laughs> punish him That's, quite a bit when this giant yeah. comes out. This is the play people usually go for and they always get really punished. This is what I mean, like the better handle player usually wins. Uh, if you're experienced in this matchup, I don't really like coining out the Drake there since uh, the giant just kills it straight out exactly. and he can't really do anything about it. Um, so and he I can't think... even play a giant himself the upcoming turn when he used the coiny, so it's put yourself in a big in a really bad situation there. 
I'm not sure I like tapping there. I think he had two better options. One was just to play the Watcher and taunt up just the Watcher. Mm -hmm. Make the giant run into it. Yeah, exactly. I would that, like or that just thing. using Defender of Argus onto the Drake in order to deal five damage to the giant. But it, it's also a bit scary since he might have Mortal Coil just to finish it off. Then he doesn't have a Dark Pump to do the extra three. So I would have liked just taunting and the Watcher there. Yeah, there we go. So this, this is really a matchup about value. If yep. whoever can kill off your opponent's minions more efficiently a lot of the time yeah, um, i mean he can't even play the giant now that's why like when you coin out the drake you just put yourself in so much trouble I, especially because some... he did have a giant in hand i think hesitating yeah is probably the correct play and just playing out watcher and being patient because he's about to his best option sadly well he actually has a decent move here, by no means the best. He could owl his own Ancient Watcher to trade into the Giant and just leave the Drake alive, which isn't the end of the world. No, and you play, I guess you play a Watcher on top of that. I think so. Yeah. He has to make that play, otherwise he falls behind too much. Taunting them is really scary because the Shadow Flame can just, you know, wipe the whole board, for example. Is he just going to taunt them both up? Yeah. This is not terrible, but again, it's still susceptible to a Shadow Flame. Mm -hmm. what to play? I mean, if he decides to... Sh do we use Shadow Flame here? I don't think you do. On the other hand, what are other options? I well, what if he... Be... I mean, he can... Uh, if he Arguses, he can trade both and keep his units, for example. Uh... It's also a matchup of choices, so you really want to cycle through your deck. You... So one of the big issues is a good handlock player in the mirror will never let your, like, your opponent get below 18 or even 17 health. So being able to tap every turn not only gets you more cards, but actually gets you in the range to use your Molten Giants, which is yeah. a huge, huge factor. Yeah, he's gonna Argus and double trade, no? Uh -huh. Interesting. Just trade one. Yeah. That's a fair play. It is. But again, it's susceptible to... To Shadow Flame. Yeah. Why it's always been a this is always a very finicky matchup is you never want to overextend because of shadow flame you never want to get your opponent too low you just want to trade off all your minions and keep them at 30 health which is a lot uh harder said than done or a lot easier said than done i'm sorry if he had the shadow flame there he could actually have wiped the board but he did not so Okay, so now here's the difficult decision. Which player is which currently? I think the one with the ooze in hand is Ruxar. Is that right? Oh, really? Wasn't it the other way? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, okay, so the, the acidic swamp ooze is Ruxar. Okay. Because he's the one who started and it attacked mm -hmm. the coin. Yeah, true, true, true. Mm, what option does he have here? He still has to, does he have a good shadow shadow flame play here? I think he. I think yeah, shadow... he shadow flame the taunt here. But now is the hard part. Do you attack it? Yeah. What do you do here? How much life is that? Twenty six life. So you can do fifteen. So I guess you just put him around there. Yeah. He might do two more damage. I don't think he will go all two, in at least. More, I think two more damage, if anything, would be Two more is fine, yeah. The general rule of thumb is if you're trying to set up lethal, you can get them one damage below the amount of mana they have. That way they can't actually Molten Giant Anton up. Yeah. Does this set up for lethal though? I think it does. He'll have 15 damage in hand plus the Hellfire, so that will end it. Hmm, Shadow Flame is not really strong. Well, he can kill. No. I think Azer Drake Heal Bot 
might be the necessary play here. Yeah, I should re heal, but it's a really good play here. I mean, he does have the Shadow Flame Giant for upcoming turns. That's always a good hand, good thing to have on your hand. So it's usually a full board clear against hand look. But the issue with that is if he uses Azure Drake um, Heelbot, his Giant will cost five mana next turn. Yeah, so, he's so he won't be able to actually do Giant Shadow Flame. Mm hmm, that's true. What do you do here? really no optimal but he has he has to heal or taunt up i mean since his your opponent basically has lethal on board here i mean he has eight cards so wait wait don't use yeah. that heal bot no wrong heal bot <laughs> that is true <laughs> okay so I, I that i wonder how that's going to affect the game but i think that's going to be a big difference that one mana extra not only the fact that he wasted a mana but now he doesn't have the option to use the heal bot later in the game for one less mana. Yeah. That was actually a really big mistake. <clears throat> it it might the... bite him in the ass really hard. Mm -hmm. I, I think it was the, uh, oh no, I'm roping, I need to do this really quickly. Yeah. I feel like the rope just, not only like, the idea of the rope, but the sound of it. It makes it like, oh no, I have to hurry up. You actually have a decent amount of time when the rope starts to finish your move. Yeah. I mean, if you're an experienced player, you, you know how long the rope lasts and you can just, you know, play normally while the rope is up. Exactly. But if you're not used to playing with the rope, you panic like crazy. Everyone panicked in the beginning. Like, the first months when you play hard, someone the rope came, you were like, oh shit. <laughs> just drop That's everything. Really experience really matters. <laughs> As yeah. you, we have Ruxar here, just the rope's coming and he's not rushing. He's taking his time, thinking the move through. So he can wipe out the whole board here if he wants to. What else can he do? Hmm, does he have a. No. What do you think? Is Giant Shadow Flame the only play here? Drake almost works, but it leaves the Emperor at one life. So if he had a Mortal Coil, it would have been viable. I think, I think you just have to go for a full clear here. It's a little bit unfortunate with the board state, but you just can't leave that alone. No. But at the same time, you just don't want to... I mean, he's still giving up board, which is a big problem, and he doesn't have anything to, on his hand to contest it the next turn either. Now, to be honest, I, would you Jaraxxus here? I mean, he does have an empty board. How many taunt? He does have heals. He does have a taunter. But he has two Molten Giants, and they will basically never... I don't think you can Jaraxxus until you play your Molten Giants. You kind of need to play the Molten Giants before you... But I, I feel like here. that's a common misconception that people have, is you can't, you shouldn't play Drax before you use your Molten Giants. Because you have to think about it as your opponent may very well a big game hunter. So, in most instances, a 6-6 six, six is better than an 8-8. Eight, eight. That is true, but he does have two Giants, but yeah. No, but I, I think he should keep Drax here. I think it's a hard decision, but overall, because he does have the both giants in hand yeah. and the fourth state, I would have to agree. He might be able to play Jaraxxus with the board soon. Like having nope. one unit up, for example. That'd be very optimal. Yeah. It's a shame he didn't have uh, Jaraxxus in hand when he played Emperor, because then he can play Jaraxxus plus 6-6 six, six at the same turn on turn 10. Dr. Boom. Oh, but he does have the big game hunter, so it's not looking very good right now. So what are your best options here? Um, well, you're definitely going to use Dr. Boom. What do you do before you play Dr. Boom? You play your own Dr. Boom? <laughs> so both players have used one shadow. <laughs> we know that. Yeah. Um, playing your own Dr. Boom wouldn't be bad by 
any means. The only issue is whether you go face or not. It gets punished by a second Shadow Flame, but you do have to keep in mind that he's already used one. Yeah. yeah I, I think you stop playing around Shadow Flame at this point. They might even only run one. Some people run one Shadow Flame, double Hellfire. Now that's a very interesting move. Oh, really? He so he's saving the BGH for another giant? I guess. I like that, but that's just like, hey, mortal coil my giant, and yeah, make I, I, and possibly have lethal. I don't like that. I think you should use big game when you can. You, I mean, it puts a big game on the board as well. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not like he could have gotten shadow flame with a board like this. It just would have set up an easy lethal, I think. Yeah. The chance of having yep. your second mountain giant and shadow flame is so slim. So what can he really do here? He has to take out hmm, Hellfire. I mean, he could actually board clear with the Hellfire, which is really strong, and play a Molten Giant if he's a little bit lucky with the bounces here. Can he board clear with Hellfire? If he's lucky, yes. Uh, but it has <laughs> to lucky. hit the... It has to hit... Like, one, one of the bombs has to hit Dr. Boom for three, basically. Or it just has to hit it for one, I think. Or he can play... I mean, he can play the Dark Bomb as well. I think Hellfire is the correct play here. But he's got to move quickly so he can... By the way. Because he has a lot of bombs going off. Oh, wow. Time. And he got it off. Oh, well played. But I think the... he missed. I think he wanted to do the Dark Bomb on the Watcher here. That way he doesn't have to use the two mana next turn. So we have Ruxar up right now. Obviously the Molten Giant's going to come down. And BGH will definitely come down this turn. Exactly. I think that might have been the reason he wanted to save the BGH. But yeah. the same reasoning, he would have still had his Molten Giant up if he had used the BGH last turn. Yep. Uh, I think 99% of the times when you can use BGH, you use it. There is no reason to save it. You're getting the value right there and a minion on board. Mm -hmm. Especially in that situation, I do have to completely agree with you. Now the question is whether or not to use Belcher. I don't see a reason to not tap, I don't think, if you're going to use Belcher. That is true. What is, well, what does his opponent use? Obviously a Hellfire double Dark Bomb would kill him, but he did just use one Hellfire. He had just used one Dark Bomb. So I don't, I'm not sure what exactly he could lose to. He's going with the safe play. I mean, this looks like a winning play for sure. I don't think there's any out for Idiotech. So Ruxar looks like he's going to come back from behind after being 0-1 to take the series and move on to the grid stage. Yep. Yeah, I can't see any way out of this either. Um, I mean... Can play. He can have three taunters up, but I don't think that's enough. Can I play a Drake, Argus, Argus? Is there anything to Mortal Coil? Nope. <laughs> no, it's definitely game. Would would Drake, Argus, Argus save you that turn? I think. I mean. Wait, wait, wait. He board only. It would. He could silence a minion and mortal coil his own owl. To draw what? Big game hunter? Mm. No, maybe that wouldn't do it. No. So this is not lethal showing, but with the hellfire it's going to end the game. Yep. The, the thing is, he, he might have lived if he goes Drake double Argus, but it's not really a winning play. You always have to think like that. Like, you can always make a play that makes you survive a turn, but if it oh, doesn't make you win, then it's pointless. 
the only thing <laughs> that for Rogue BM is Trexus BM. Trexus BM is the best. <laughs> So there we have it. It looks like Ruxar is actually going to make it to the grid stage, the top eight players. Um, so congratulations to him. Wonder, is he the first player in the grid or let's see here. Uh, no, there's actually currently six. So right now we, I can read through the list. We have Livion, Rex, KXN, Kuja, Koi2, Past Koala Bear, Idiotech, and then we are fine. We are late, waiting on one last match to finish up, and then we'll be in the best of eight. Yeah. Not the best of eight. I, of eight. I really wonder. The, the last game will be Actus against uh, Skumatu. And I actually had, a, in my World of Warcraft guild, I had a guy called Actus, so I might know that guy, but it could be another person as well. That'd be funny. I bet he'll be excited if you're casting, if that's true. <laughs> but we're going to go to a quick break while we wait for the final matches to finish up so we can get into the grid stage. Thank you all for watching and stay tuned in.